and what a great opportunity to have to speak today on such an incredibly important motion. We're here today to talk about the creation of a special committee, House of Commons committee, to look at all aspects of the U.S.-Canada economic relationship. Now, why a special committee? Well, there's two key reasons. One, we need an integrated opportunity to look at all aspects of the economic relationship. Our House of Commons committees tend to be uh, focused on a certain aspect, our finance committee, our trade committee, our foreign affairs committee. But in this instance, we need to be able to look at all of those things in one committee. And that's why we need this special relationship, uh, economic relationship, House of Commons committee, because an economic relationship is a relationship and it includes all aspects. Second of all, parliamentarians absolutely have a role in this conversation. We have seen increasing challenges and increasing narrative from this government that says that the House of Commons committees don't have a role. And yet, in fact, it's House of Commons committees that work with Canadians to discuss and look at and research challenging issues so that we can make those recommendations to Canadians and make those recommendations to governments. So why now? Well, we find ourselves at a tipping point. We've witnessed a fundamental shift in the global economic balance of power. We're seeing where trade is now being used as a weapon for countries to be able to gain political, economic, and national strategic advantage. But at the same time, in the last 20 years, we've seen vast increases in consumer spending and GDP growth and stock prices. But what we haven't seen, both in the United States and Canada, is significant economic benefit for individual Canadians and Americans. And that was before COVID. And so now we need to act with a sense of urgency. This rising tide hasn't raised all boats. And so we need to understand why that is, and we need to be proactive to determine how we are going to secure the future health and prosperity of Canadians. And there's no question we won't be able to do that successfully without our most important trading partner and defense and security ally in many cases, our greatest friend, the United States. We, of course, have $1.5 billion a day in trade. We have all kinds of people and goods going back and forth. We have integrated supply chains. But we need this committee to understand where both of our countries are economically, basically to understand the fundamental foundation from which we will be looking at what our economic relationship needs to be. The world is not the same as it was in the 1980s when we first put NAFTA in place. Both our economies have made substantial changes. From 1999 to 2015, the U.S. has lost over 5 million manufacturing jobs. Canada has lost over 600,000, over 25% of our country's industrial workforce. Barely two workers in 10 in Canada are employed in making goods. And in the last 18 years, there's not been a single net increase in jobs in the goods sectors. And in both of our economies, the middle class is drastically sh shrinking. In the United States, in, in 1980, 60% of national income was from the middle class. Unfortunately, today, that number is only 40%. And every four years, one in five people in the middle class fall down into the ranks of the working poor, and it is increasingly difficult to move up. Wages are stagnating. The gig economy is making work more precarious. Prices continue to rise, and student debt is a greater burden than any generation previously. From 1990 to 2015, 80% of Canadians saw few, if any, 
income gains. And this is all before COVID. So we have seen a trend in the U.S. that started long before President Trump and may well continue under the new administration. We need to understand what that is and start to actively plan and address it and to mitigate it and work mutually for a win-win situation between Canadians and the Americans. The narrative we have heard is that the global trading system is universally unfair to U.S. workers. There is a call in the United States to turn back the clock to a time when goods sold in the U.S. were made in the U.S. There's also a further push for globalization, which appears is neither inevitable nor desirable. And if actions speak louder than words, then we have a number of examples that highlight this trend. The renegotiated NAFTA, the Canadian-US-Mexico agreement, is not a free trade agreement, but a managed trade agreement with conditions that further uh, restrict Canada's participation in the North American market, it gives American farmers increased access to Canada while also eliminating regulations slanting the playing field in favor of the U.S. And it also caps the growth of the Canadian auto sector and raises the cost of Canada's production, jeopardizing our competitiveness. It's also an agreement that has caused Canada to lose sovereignty because it's not just a free, simple free trade agreement, it's an agreement that has clauses that put conditions around Canada's ability to enter into other trade agreements, as well as limiting our independence on monetary policy. Furthermore, in the US, we've seen massive tax reform where US corporate taxes have been slashed and measures have been put in place to incentivize American companies to repatriate their manufacturing operations to the U.S. We've witnessed punishing steel and aluminum tariffs under the guise of national security, uh, and we've seen that new protocols have been put in place to make it easier to put further tariffs on in the future. We're also witnessing non-tariff trade barriers from the United States, where the United States International Trade Commission is in the process of reviewing the safety and security of blueberries, strawberries, and red peppers that Canada is exporting to the US. These investigations after 21 days make it so that the US can impose tariffs on them. That's a 750 million export market affecting over 8,300 8, Canadian farmers and families and thousands of jobs as well. There's no question that economic relationships at their core are relationships. And like people, no aspect of a relationship can be viewed in isolation. Canada's relationship with the U.S. is a defense and security one. It's a values and ideas one. It's a worldview one as well as an economic one. And it is one that is rapidly changing and evolving. And Canada cannot afford to be complacent or take it for granted or assume that the conditions that have been in place for the last 20 years will remain the same going forward. We must pivot. We must have the courage to look at ourselves and understand exactly what we need to do to position us and the United States for the future in a win-win situation. And that's why we need a special committee, House of Commons committee, to understand our own economic situation, our own rules, regulatory frameworks, and taxes, and everything, so that we can then also look at the security and prosperity that we depend on in this most important relationship. Canada's security and prosperity depends on this relationship and the benefits that we can achieve together with our friends and allies will be unparalleled. And I hope that my colleagues will join me in supporting this motion so that we can create that committee 
get this work started as absolutely quickly, urgently as possible to position ourselves for a secure... Question.